the assumption has crept into our rhetoric and our understanding that we live in a leisure society to some extent. We have flexible working time. Uh, we, you hear the term a lot, relative poverty is against absolute poverty. And all of these kinds of ideas suggest that in fact, we should feel pretty pleased with ourselves. We should both feel quite leisured and we should feel less in bondage to work than perhaps somebody in the 19th century who was kind of shackled to a machine in a factory. But in fact, we're very unhappy. It's irrelevant how much you work in actual terms anymore. The way in which the spectacle operates is to make of leisure itself an adjunct to work. In other words, the idea of not working and working are in some sense locked into a, an unholy and reciprocal relationship with each other. You know, the fact that you're not working is only because you've been working and the fact that you're working is only so that you cannot work. In other words, so engrafted is that rubric in the way that we approach life that that we, we can never be rid of it. De Boer also observed that as technology advances, production becomes more efficient. Accordingly, the workers' tasks invariably become more trivial and menial. It would seem that as human labor becomes irrelevant, the harder it is to find fulfilling work. The truth of the matter is that most people already in Britain are doing useless jobs and have been for generations, actually. Most jobs in management are completely useless. They basically consist in the rearrangement of information into different patterns that are meant to take on the semblance of meaning in a bureaucratic context. So most work is in fact a waste of time already. And I think people understand that intuitively. When I go into companies, I often ask the question, why are you employing people? You could get monkeys or you could get robots to do this job. The people are not allowed to think. They are processing, they're, they're just, like a machine, they're, they're being so hemmed down, they operate with an algorithm and they just do it. We all have the need to find meaning in our lives and it is our professions that define us. To work is to provide a service, either to yourself or for others, and most of us would like our work to be purposeful and contributory to society in some way. It is an uncomfortable truth that with our present model of economics, not everyone is able to monetize their passions. If any of this were to come to fruition, if we learn to make automation work for us, the question remains, what do we do with our days? There's a good and a bad. Uh, the good is that the cost of everything drops. We can solve some of the basic problems of humanity like disease, hunger, lodging. Um, we can uh, look after all the basic needs of, of human beings. The dark side is that automation takes jobs away. And the question is, what do we do for a living? Um, some of us will seek enlightenment and rise and will keep learning and growing. But the majority of people don't care about those things. The majority of people just want to do you know, grunt work. They want to socialize with people as they do at work. Sennett wrote uh, in his book, The Corrosion of Character, that in late capitalism, one of the great kind of supports for human interaction and, and for human meaning is the longevity of social relations and the interactions in, in working environments. And that if, if that's taken away, if what's required is to be continually uh, responsive and changing uh, in a precarious world, um, then people no longer find the, the fulfillment or the substance in, in what they're doing. There is an underlying desire for people to do things. You know, you spoke about the idea that people want to be engaged creatively. They want to be engaged, you know, go back to, to, to basic Marxist ideas of praxis, and right back to John Locke. They want to be engaged in what Locke thought of as primary acquisition, mixing their labor, either their creative thinking or their physical labor even with the world in order to transform it. They want to do that. And that's a very basic human instinct mm. to do that. And the idea of a leisured class, as it were, a class who is is not involved in a praxis with the world, but is simply involved in a passive way as a recipient of things, is actually repugnant to people. They would sooner work for the man in a meaningless job and construct a false ideology of involvement and engagement than they would actually sit on their ass. We can't get away from the fact that, that people work because they have to. That's you know the primary motivation for most people, that if you don't work, 
you're going to be living on the street. Okay. Once we, if we ever move into a future where that's not the case and people don't have to worry about that, then we can begin to take on these more philosophical questions of, of, uh, you know, but we're not at that point yet. We, we can't, we can't pretend that we are living in an age where, um, that that necessity for an income doesn't exist.